So guys, yeah, it, it is quite a breezy day today, so excuse the noise and the rustling in the background, but it's a bit of a blowy day, but I do like to record my videos outside. I could record them indoors uh, in a studio with a little um, LED lamp in the background and a couple of wall clocks, but uh, I quite like being outdoors. It's kind of, it's my favorite place to be really. So I like to be outdoors with my watches. So I like to make my videos out here too. Now guys, I wanted to talk to you about the Rolex market. It's a it's a it's a absolute clickbait content provider uh, for most YouTube channels, as you know. And uh, you know there are some channels out there that are doing very well out of just talking about the Rolex market. As you probably know, guys, I like Rolex, but I also like Amiga. I like Tudor. Uh, I like Grand Seiko. I like lots of other brands. I like vintage watches. Nobody watches vintage vintage watch videos, guys. Why is that? You know, I, I made a video recently about a vintage King Seiko, and uh, I think I've had 600 views. I, I guarantee you that if I made a video about a vintage um, Rolex that I just bought, I'd probably have five or six thousand views by now. So, uh, yeah, there's no, there's no question, guys, that Rolex content is uh, is what kind of you know gets views, it gets clicks, it gets thumbs ups, and it gets thumbs downs. Um, so, uh, yeah, please excuse me. I'm going to talk about Rolex from time to time, and I'm going to waffle about Rolex like I am now. But I'm going to just move on quickly, guys, uh, to talk to you about what I think is going on in the Rolex market right now. And I think, now I'm not gonna to talk too much about the past because we all know the past. We all know what's happened over the last three or four years. What I see now, guys, and I think I can just summarize this uh, briefly by saying, what I'm seeing now is the Rolex market has split into two. It is now a divided market. It's divided into basically watches that are still as hard to get as they were three or four years ago and then you've got the other side of it which is you've now got watches which are actually quite easy to get but there's a knack there's a way to get them and I want to talk to you about that so first I want to talk to you about the uh, the easier to get watches the, the, the half of the market where I think guys if you want to get yourself a Rolex and you just you just want that one watch that one Rolex uh, and you're happy to make a few concessions potentially to get that then uh, I'm going to tell you how you can how you can get that immediately pretty much with a little bit of work and uh, and guys what I'm essentially talking about here I'm talking about two-tone watches and gold watches that is a, a divided market now it's divided quite significantly away from steel sports there was a time when it was just as difficult to get any Rolex it was just as difficult to get anything two-tone anything gold was just as hard to get as anything in steel sports that's not the case anymore and i think you guys most of you will know this already there are a few people saying oh yeah rolex should be uh, they they should take away the exhibition only signs now and and have uh, and have rolex you know little for sale signs uh, with the price tag next to it i don't think that's ever going to happen guys and it, it may happen at the odd ad but i think what we're going to see and I'm talking now specifically about two-tone and gold models. I think what we're going to see uh, is a market where if you walk up to an AD window and you see a couple of, let's say, two-tone date justs in the window, it will still say for exhibition only. But my suggestion to you is go in. If you like that watch, that two-tone date just, 41, whatever it is, if you like it and you think to yourself, yeah, actually... I, if that's available for me to buy, I will buy that. Uh, I think, guys, if you walk into your AD and express your interest in that watch and ask to try it on, then you, you appear as a, like you're a genuine customer that really likes the watch. They'll sell that watch to you. I don't think any of the watches that are two-tone and gold that are in the window now, bar one or two, uh, are actually uh, taken. I actually think those watches are genuinely for sale. I just think that the four exhibition only sign uh, that's next to them is to put off is to put off time wasters and tire kickers people that can't afford it in other words guys if you're seriously looking to buy a rolex you already know how much they cost if you're not seriously looking to buy a rolex but you think oh that one's for sale uh, i'll go and try it on and see if i like it and then you bulk at the price because you suddenly realize that 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 two-tone that two-tone explorer is actually um you know 10 12 15 grand uh, and you suddenly realize you can't afford it the, those four exhibition only signs are just there guys to put those people off i don't actually think that that watch is not actually for sale so there's a whole area there guys that if you're genuinely looking to get yourself a rolex there's a massive range of watches now where i think if you walked into an ad and had a genuine conversation as a genuine guy and said look uh, I don't own a Rolex, I've got a couple of watches, uh, I'd really like to get myself a Rolex. 
I'm happy uh, to get myself a nice two-tone date just. I think if there, there isn't one in the window that they'll sell to you, I think they'll hop back into the safe, open the door, and I think that there'll be some options there for you guys. So my suggestion to you, if you're looking to buy yourself a Rolex, and it might be that you're looking to get yourself a celebratory Rolex, you know, or a milestone Rolex, essentially you're buying a Rolex for the reasons that people used to buy a Rolex back, back in the day. Uh, when I was younger, which was it was an aspirational watch and you bought it as a milestone for something. Uh, I think, you know, a two, I actually think a two-tone Datejust, guys, uh, I actually think a two-tone Datejust or a two-tone Explorer is a fantastic choice, a fantastic choice as a celebratory milestone watch. I really do. I, I just think they're superb. So that's the way to do it, guys, is ignore the fact that it says exhibition only. Get yourself in there. If you like the look of that two-tone watch, get yourself in there. And try hard to buy it there and then because I'm pretty certain guys that you'll you will be sold if it's not that watch that AD will think crikey this guy's genuine he's got the money and he's happy to buy a two-tone watch uh, let's go to the safe and see what we've got I think that will happen so that wouldn't have happened a couple of years ago certainly wouldn't have happened three or four years ago but that's where I see Rolex getting easier to buy guys but you've got to be smart about it okay don't don't mope around because you keep seeing exhibition only signs in the windows, okay? Don't get in, talk to the AD and actually tell them, hey, that, uh, that watch there that says exhibition only, I want to buy that, will you sell it to me? Because I think then your conversation is going to change and it's going to become positive for you. So, of course, the other side of the market, guys, is, uh, is that, you know, the side that we're all kind of looking at all the time, which is the steel sports market. Now, steel sports watches are still not available and... <laughs> I'm going to be quite honest with you guys, I've got two thoughts on this. One is they will always be pretty much unavailable for you to walk in and get. And the other side of it is I think most of the ADs have got still sports watches in their safe and um, they're just being very, very picky about who they sell them to. That, this, is, this is just my opinion, I could be wrong. Most of the ADs will tell you that they, that they have to wait for them to come in and they have to allocate them. I, I get that, but I also think that the, particularly the larger ADs uh, that have got a lot of stock coming in constantly. I think they've pretty much got one of everything in the safe. They're just being very, very choosy about who they decide to allocate those watches to. And um, so think of it like this, guys. If, if a GMT Master 2 Pepsi was easy to get, if you could walk in and buy one, the chances are, guys, that especially when you consider the price of them, the chances are you might not want it as much as you think you do when they're just really easy to get now this is just marketing 101 okay make it scarce make it scarce make it hard to get people will either pay more or they'll go on a list and they'll wait to get it so why would an ad want to make uh, a gmt master 2 pepsi easily available even if they had three or four let's say they had three or four in the safe which i think some of the, the larger ad's do um, let's say they had three or four in the safe just because they've got them and they could sell them to three or four punters tomorrow and make a lot of money they don't necessarily want to do that because if they do uh, that watch will, will I promise you that watch would become less desirable you only really want that watch more than you want the the black and grey dial version because it's harder to get because it's more scarce so why sell you a GMT Master 2 uh, when they know that you know that the only reason you're going to get a GMT Master 2 is to spend more money with them. And I've answered this in a couple of the comments, guys. A couple of the questions that I've had recently is, uh, how, do I, how do I get myself a GMT Master 2 mark? And I've basically said to them, unless you're incredibly lucky uh, or you know somebody, uh, you will need to buy other products before you get a GMT Master 2 that they've got in the safe. And the ADs obviously play this game with you. That hasn't changed, guys. You know what the game is. Get yourself a Tudor Black Bay 58, get a Pelagos, uh, get yourself an Amiga Seamaster, get yourself a couple of Longines or whatever it is that floats your boat. Start buying some other pieces, maybe get some jewellery or some earrings for your wife uh, or for yourself. Uh, buy, a bit of, buy a bit of bling, you know, diamonds. Uh, all of a sudden, guys, you'll start to become a little bit more popular with that AD and um, the, the, the chances of you being allocated one of the GMT Master 2s out of their safe uh, will rise significantly as you start to spend money with them. So I'll, I'll put to you guys, why the heck would Rolex and the ADs 
want to change that model. Why would they want to change that model? It makes no sense whatsoever uh, for a GMT Master 2 or a Panda uh, or even a Explorer 36. It makes no sense whatsoever for those watches to become easily available because otherwise uh, they'll just sell all their Rolex and they won't sell any Longines, they won't sell any Tudors, they won't sell any Amigas uh, because they're the watches you have to buy first before you get the watch that you really want. Uh, from Rolex so that's not going to change guys uh, there's a lot of people out there and it's wishful thinking in my opinion and it's it's kind of to a degree also you know just a kind of not quite understanding you know maybe the way business works these days is that um, yeah that scarcity of supply uh, is what creates the desire which is what reinforces the demand and you can't change that model uh, and you have to keep selling your Tudors and your Amigas and your Longines and your Tags and your Christopher Wards or whatever it is. Uh, you have to keep selling those watches to keep the doors open. And the only way you're going to do that is to tantalise and titillate the people that want the Rolex that if they buy other products, uh, they will eventually get the Rolex that they want. That's not going to change. So there are the two, there are the two sides. The, this is the Rolex market as I see it. And I know, guys, you're probably going to have uh, some slightly different opinions to me on some of this, but this is just what I see, okay? I was talking to a, uh, a Rolex AD quite recently, and uh, they told me that uh, they had a uh, two-tone Explorer available for sale. They had it available for sale. Uh, they had nobody on the list, or they'd, let's put it this way, they probably phoned several potential customers for it who declined. On that basis, they said, well, "Okay, well, we'll just we'll just put it in the case and uh, we'll put it up for sale." And that's what they did. And this is a fantastic watch, guys. Whoever got that watch, congratulations! Very lucky. Uh, they walked in and uh, and they picked it up. They they walked out with a with a two tone a, a two tone Explorer 36, guys. And uh, that is a really gorgeous watch. It's bloody expensive, but it's gorgeous. And if you want that watch, a two-tone Explorer, as an example, if you want that as your celebratory watch, as your milestone watch, uh, then, and you can just walk into an AD and grab it without all the crap that you have to go through uh, to get your GMT Master 2, I know what I'd rather do, guys. I'd know what I'd rather do. And it's worth seriously considering too. So that's the way I see the market at the moment. Two tones, gold watches, and I think you guys know this anyway, uh, they're going to get easier to get and I think, um, although discount the fact that it still says exhibition only, um, they are for sale. Go in and try and get yourself a deal. And, uh, and the Steel Sports, now carry on doing what you're doing guys, carry on on the wait list, go see your AD now and then, have a chit chat about watches, uh, remind them what you're after. Uh, buy yourself a Tudor now and then or an Amiga and uh, and it will come your way eventually. It will come your way quicker than it has done in the past but uh, but you're still going to have to wait. So there you go guys, that's uh, that's my take on the on the Rolex market as I see it in the uh, in the middle basically of 2024 as, as we are in now. Uh, here in New Zealand as an aside, uh, here in New Zealand we're in the middle of, um, well I hope it's the middle, of what appears to be quite a nasty little recession. Uh, there are job losses, uh, interest rates, and uh, interest rates and inflation are still too high. Uh, there are job losses. There is a, a lot of restructuring going on in the in the New Zealand economy and business. Uh, we've got a new government here, and they've decided to completely strip out uh, a lot of the government agencies. So there are literally thousands of people uh, being made redundant at the moment. There is a lot less money swilling around here in New Zealand in the economy, uh, it, especially in the disposable income economy but one thing one thing i can tell you guys uh, that doesn't change and hasn't changed and never will change is that the rich will carry on getting richer irrespective of what's going on in the economy and irrespective of inflation and interest rates uh, and the fact that there are job losses uh, people that have a lot of money will always have a lot of money and in actual fact they will continue uh, to have even more money uh, and that's the irony unfortunately an example of that being here in New Zealand is that the new government, which is a centre-right government, we've, we've just moved away from a centre-left government, uh, we've now got a centre-right government, and they've decided uh, to, uh, for, for any landlord uh, that's got a, a mortgage on a house that they're renting out, so they're already making money on the house through the rent, uh, those landlords now do not have to pay interest on their mortgage repayments. I mean, that's, that's just basically throwing uh, money, more money, back at people that don't really need it. So they're essentially, this centre-right government is now giving uh, people that have already got a decent amount of money, more money. 
despite massive redundancies and uh, and job losses so uh, so there you go guys the rich will continue to get richer uh, whether the economy is going well or going badly what that means and I'm just circling there is a reason why I've raised this actually what that means circling back uh, to the watch market is that those people that have a lot of money will continue to buy desirable watches now this is the key this is the key thing and that's why I've raised this as an example I'm not just whinging about politics I've raised this as an example of how people with a lot of money uh, and there's a lot of them out there will continue to buy the desirable watches guys so those desirable watches <laughs> even though they might be getting easier to get hold of in, a, in some respects you're going to wait for a shorter period of time uh, there are still enough wealthy people out there uh, to, to make sure that they stay desirable and that people will always buy them so there you go, I've finished now, I promise you, that's the end of my Rolex uh, rant and, uh, and my rant against the centre-right governments that uh, just want to give more money to people that don't really need it. 